Uh, lecanemab is the latest of a class of uh, medications, uh, monoclonal antibodies against amyloid, um, that um, aim to clear the depositions of amyloid. What is different about lecanemab to others is that it um, has an activity also on the water-soluble components of uh, amyloid. So it, it has an impact earlier in the cascade of the pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease. And uh, when I say it's the latest, it's the latest where a phase three clinical trial has been completed and was published, uh, the Clarity AD trial uh, published in the New England Journal. And what is excited about it is that it showed not only a significant clearance of the amyloid deposition, which is expected with all these medications in this class, but um, most importantly, it showed a clinically captured, a clinically measured a benefit uh, in that it slowed down the progression of the disease over the course of the study um, by about 30%. Um, that's the first time that um, we have a medication that can make it to the market and slow down the progression of the disease in a meaningful way. Um, and so the company uh, applied for accelerated approval. And last week on uh, January 6, uh, the FDA uh, did approve uh, the accelerated uh, clearance of the medic of this uh, medication, and the company plans to make it commercially available. And, and with that, the opportunity is opened for patients to receive a medication that would have a, a potential meaningful clinical impact. Some um, of the uh, viewers will, will remember and recall that another medication in this class, uh, Aduhelm, uh, the Kanemab um, was also cleared uh, some weeks ago. What is different here is that uh, in the case of Lecanemab, uh, there is a clinical impact in the primary outcomes. There is a consistency in the effects uh, in, uh, with benefit in almost all subgroups uh, in the study, both for primary and secondary outcomes. This is a medication that while in the CLARITY trial had a statistically significant effect, as I mentioned, both in the primary and secondary outcomes, including clinical um, measures and quality of, of life uh, measures, um, the effect is relatively small. Um, it was sort of a moderate benefit that needs to be balanced against the risks. Um, the, the, there is a number of things to consider on the side effect and risk side. Uh, first of all, um, it is important to, to realize that about a third of patients uh, had infusion uh, reactions, allergic reactions to the infusion. This is a medication that is given as an intravenous infusion twice every two months. And uh, about 30% of the patients in the trial had reactions that in about 4% of them was, was serious, was significant, uh, requiring treatment. But in addition to that, like all the medications in this class of amyloid monoclonal antibodies, it can cause something called ARIA, A-R-I-A, an amyloid-related imaging abnormality that can cause edema and hemorrhages that occurred also in about 30% of the patients. And in about 4% or 5% of them, it was serious, severe. In fact, in three instances, it led to bleeds that were significant enough as to cause the demise of the patient in all instances in people who were concurrently on anticoagulants. So the decision at the individual level basis to whether to prescribe or not this medication and what kind of monitoring to put in place is going to be a complicated one because of the need to balance risk and benefit and translate the group level results to the individual level uh, patients. Um, that's challenging. One thing that is critical is to um, try to identify patients early in the disease because it's the moment where it's likely to have the greatest impact. And that puts, I think, a significant emphasis on the need for primary care providers 
to be part of the assessment of uh, patients, to identify those where it is most likely to be indicated and refer those to the neurologist and to the specialists in general, so as to not delay the, the process excessively.